when you think pre-1900 cameras, what do you think? Giants like this? Kodak 2D 8x10 camera? Or perhaps something like this? Kodak Pocket 3A camera. Now, what if I told you that they were much smaller cameras? Smaller than that, Kodak Pocket. Way smaller than that, 8x10. Actually, so small that you could fit them in just any small pocket of even modern pens. Today we're going to be talking Kodak pocket camera from circa 1895-1896. This little beauty that comfortably sits in the palm of my hand. So without further ado, let's dive in, take a closer look at this tiny beauty. Eastman Kodak Company introduced pocket Kodak cameras in 1895. Though model with the zebra wood veneer you see here. This is an 1895 version, whereas the one with the black leatherette is an 1896 version. Uh, they can be distinguished by their viewfinder and also the original 19, 1895 model uh, has uh, was introduced with red leatherette. This one here was refinished by the previous owner with a zebra wood veneer. Not necessarily the, the most um, elegant finish, but it, it's, um, it's a very cool looking camera nevertheless. These cameras were designed to use 102 film uh, produced by Eastman Kodak and it was spooled on specially made reels, ratcheted wheels, and I'll show you that in a second. And this was a daylight loading film, meaning it had a paper backing. Let's start with the earlier model, 1895, which is this one here. I'll put this one to the side. The shutter on this one is a sector shutter, which was later changed to rotary shutter. The camera does feature round viewfinder, although the pictures were rectangular and the size of the pictures that this camera took was one and a half by two inches, so roughly 36 millimeter by 50 millimeter. In order to open it, there's a latch in front of it. You simply pull it out and the whole assembly comes out. It's, it's good to note that originally this camera was made with a sheet aluminum. That itself would prevent the wood from warping, hence uh, causing issues later. And I'll show you on 1896 model how that affected the, the camera. So this was very cool, very light design. This is where the fresh spool of film would go. Again, this was a 102 ratcheted reel, as I'll show you right here. To remove the take-up spool, you would simply turn the key clockwise. It's a left-handed thread. You lift it up, and the assembly would come out. You can see. The, the spool, which is made out of brass, and it's got some heft to it. It's got some, some weight. It's really cool. So in order to lock it back up, you simply lift up the key. You find the center, and you turn the key counterclockwise. The non-removable key is a very cool option because on the original brownies, 
later, uh, 1900s, the key was removable and was often lost. So this was very good design that you didn't risk a chance of losing the key, therefore rendering the camera useless. The inside of it is equally as interesting. It's made out of wood versus cardboard. And on early model, the shutter assembly is removable. I'm not sure why that was done, whether for service purposes or I, I, I don't know. Uh, in order to set the shutter, to cock it, you simply pull the lever to the side. And then in order to activate it, you push it down. And that's how you take a picture. Later models introduce the ability to take plates um, for this camera. The downside of that was you load one plate and then you have to take the camera into a dark room to load another one. This to me seemed kind of counterproductive because you had a light camera you can take with you anywhere. Why would you hinder it and stick plates in, in the camera, and especially one at a time? If you could load this, if there was a magazine where you could load 12 or, or more plates, that would make sense. Loading one plate at a time, no, not so much. Again, all the hardware in it, and at least in the original model, was it was completely metal. Even the, the film chamber, that was metal. Everything else was wood. The spool holders, those were made out of brass. The rollers were made out of brass as well. And Pocket Kodak is one of the first cameras. Now note it's not the first one, but it's one of the first to introduce the front uh, spool uh, design. And what that did is made the camera much shorter because now the spools were in front of the plane of focus. Whereas on original Kodaks, that uh, the, the mechanism for the film was in the back of it. So in order to lock it back up, you simply slide the top in and then you push the little latch inwards. Again, to cock the shutter, you pull it, push it to the side and you trigger it by pushing it down. In 1896, a different model, simpler model, I would say, was introduced. It looked similar to the original one. However, the shutter itself has been redesigned and was changed from sector shutter to rotary shutter. There was no need to cock it anymore. You simply move the lever and it will trigger the shutter either this way or that way. There were two additional levers on top of the camera. One was to change the aperture and the aperture ranged from f11 to f32. The second lever was to activate, so to speak, activate the time mode. It had the same key. The ratcheting sound on this one seems to be much stronger. I'm not sure if the previous one was just simply worn out or, or what, but this one sounds stronger than, than, than the previous one. The viewfinder on this one is rectangular, and now that corresponds with the actual picture. Note that this camera was designed to take horizontal pictures only. There was no viewfinder for vertical ones. No tripod socket on this one either, purely handheld. Now when we did talk about the previous one being made out of aluminum, this one on the other hand is made out of wood at least the base of it, the, the frame itself. Now that posed an issue because the wood warps based on, depending on its condition, the conditions it's um, stored in. And unfortunately in this particular case, the base warped significantly and that causes the camera to protrude upwards from its case and rendering it not light tight. The inside of this model is very similar to the one from 1895. However, I do not see the 
the shellac finish, uh, the, the lacquer. Um, maybe it was because it was meant to be a little bit cheaper or, or cheaply made, that, that I don't know. The cool feature about later models, 19 or 1896, is that, as I mentioned, it had the ability to take plates. So the false back would be removed and there was a plate holder of sort that was um, put in. Now this kind of reminds me of uh, Yashica 635 with its ability to take 35 millimeter film and often the, the kit that would be part of that, um, that design was often misplaced or lost and it's, it's hard to find these days and same is the case with this one where the plate holders are really rare to, to come about. As you can see the shutter is different and the shutter itself is not removable like on the previous model. You can also see that the spool holders are made out of brass just like the previous model. And the inside of it is made out of wood versus metal. I really like those old ads for these cameras. They were very interesting. Uh, this this particular one, uh, Pocket Kodak, they, they advertised the camera's features or the size of the camera, two and a quarter by two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. This here, a photo made with this particular camera. It was only $5 and one button does it all. So yeah, it was as simple as that. You could technically just um, load the film, take a picture and send the film back to Eastman and they would develop it and print it for you. Now there was also possibility of you doing the work yourself as outlined in these little booklets that came with one of those cameras when I bought it. This booklet here showed you how to use the camera. It went through loading, taking a photo, And what's interesting is they also mention in section three, they mention making flashlight pictures. So the requisites are the Kodak camera, which you already have, a flashlight apparatus. I find it pretty cool because what I imagine is this bar with gunpowder on it and you set it on fire and it just blows up. I, I don't know what flashlight apparatus was for Kodak, whether it was made by Kodak or it was made by um, a third party company. But this is interesting. One package flash powder. So you needed that gunpowder sort of um, thing. And it, it, it goes into details telling you how to use it. The flashlight apparatus consists of a specially constructed alcohol lamp. There you go. So having in front of it a little tray upon which is poured about a teaspoonful of flashlight powder. So it was sort of a, an explosive um, device, a, a bomb of, of sorts. But it's, it's pretty cool. Now you push the button, we do the rest as said the original ad for the Kodak back in 1888. When you were done with that roll of film, you had an option of sending it to Eastman Kodak and they would develop it for you. And I like the wordings on, on the little form that you had to fill out. To Eastman Kodak Company at Rochester, New York. Gentlemen, I send you today by mail rolls, how many you just indicated, how many rolls of pocket Kodak film to be developed and pictures finished and close find amount of dollars. And this booklet goes into details saying that send no more or no less 
than what it actually costs to develop it. Now, if you wanted to develop your own film, part six, we'll talk about that, what you needed, how to prepare film, and how to develop it. Now, this was an orthochromatic film, meaning it was not sensitive to red light, and you could do it under the lamp, which this book goes into the details. Now, the second booklet focuses mainly on developing film, which is also part of this booklet, so I'm not sure what, uh, uh, how this was uh, uh, provided with a camera. Was this a separate um, thing you bought or, or, or what it was? But and nevertheless, it's pretty cool to have these little booklets with the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this overview of these beautiful 1895 and 1896 pocket Kodak cameras. Whenever I make these videos, I learn so much about photography and the way it was back in the days. And I hope you learn some as well. I hope you enjoy these videos. I, I, and I hope you will subscribe for more because there will be more videos coming. So stay tuned, subscribe. Until next time, keep shooting film and keep the film alive.